So, uh, this is once again a classic problem, stationary complex Gaussian processes and I want to go over uh, some results which are quoted more often but uh, proof is uh, hard to get by. Uh, so to start with you have a complex Gaussian process we mean it's uh, I'm going to write it as uh, x of t minus j of t uh, because uh, I want to also write this as using the magnitude. So if I put a minus here, then uh, so x of t and y of t are the real and imaginary parts and uh, r of t and uh, theta of t are the magnitude and phase. So we know the relations r of t is uh, square root of x of x square t plus y square t and the theta of t is uh, a tan inverse of uh, let us say y of t over x of t. So everything is a process because we have uh, so uh, the, what we mean by Gaussian is that the real and imaginary parts are uh, Gaussian pro uh, processes, zero mean Gaussian processes, uh, but a little more is true to, to make it more specific in terms of, so let me look at the, so first of all it is stationary, so their autocorrelation function depends only on their difference of time lags. So I take two time instants, uh, t1 and t, uh, t and t plus tau, so first assumption is that uh, x of t is uh, stationary and similarly we, uh, we can also, I am going to write this as, uh, uh, so remember any autocorrelation function has the property that rxx tau is less than or equal to rxx0, this I am going to call it sigma square, so I am going, uh, going to use this notation. So this uh, rho tau is also symmetric, so rho tau is uh, rho of minus tau because this is a real function and uh, the key assumption is that the <coughs> y of t also has uh, uh, the same autocorrelation function, that is what I meant by uh, the special uh, relations. And similarly if you uh, look at the output uh, the cross correlation function uh, or before that we could look at actually the autocorrelation function of the z of uh, zt, so that is expected value of zt z t plus tau with a star. So if I substitute for <coughs> x of t minus j y of t multiplied by x of uh, t plus tau plus j y of t plus tau and simplify this, uh, this will turn out to be you can see from here r x x tau <coughs> minus j squared that is uh, plus r y y tau, then expected value of x of t y of t plus tau <coughs> plus expected value of uh, y of t x of uh, t plus tau, this is with a minus sign here. So this is r x y uh, tau, notice that this is the same as r yx minus tau and this is minus r yx tau, so which is the same as this term if you write it the other way it become you can write this uh, second term in terms of rxy, in other words put this term here, so this is rxy minus tau. So I'm going to <coughs> make the assumption that uh, this is an odd function. 
so that these two terms, this, this difference becomes 2 times the Rxy tau. So that's the, so the two assumptions being made, one assumption is already here, and the second assumption is that uh, <coughs> Rxy tau is going to be written as uh, minus Rxy minus tau, or Rxy minus tau is minus of Rxy tau, which means the, this would turn out to be uh, 2 times Rxx tau uh, plus J Rxy tau. So this is the special assumption being made. And uh, I also want to write uh, R x y tau in terms of uh, pull out the sigma squared, whatever is remaining I'm going to call it as R tau because again from Schwartz inequality R x y tau is uh, R x y tau also is uh, less than or equal to R x x 0 multiplied by R y y 0 square root but each of them are equal to sigma squared so that's true. So this is like the correlation function. But one uh, observation from the, uh, this line is that, uh, so this means if you put uh, tau equal to 0, you have Rxy0 is minus Rxy0. That means uh, expected value of x of t multiplied by y of t is 0 for any particular t. But x and y are jointly Gaussian. 0 mean, so that means the <coughs> correlation function is 0. That means x of t and y of t are independent. So this is what it is. So if I take the time instant t and I define x1 to be x of t1 and uh, y1 to be y of t, then these two are independent. We just uh, saw that. But if I take an extra time instant t2 or let's say t plus tau and I define x2 to be x plus and uh, y2 to be y t plus tau, these are also independent by the same argument. So for any fixed time instant, the real and imaginary parts are independent. That doesn't mean y1 and x2 or x1 and y2, x1 and y2 etc. are independent. They are not. So this is where we start actually. Uh, so we have uh, from this odd property we also have of course uh, this also means that R0 is 0. It's the same as this property. Remember, R is the normalized correlation between X and Y. So let me define, I'm, so the, what we are interested in is to find the a joint density function of these four random variables. And uh, we can also, uh, at the same time, <coughs> we, we also can generate the two random variables, R1 and theta1 here, R2 and theta2. R1 and R2 being related in this manner. R1 is the magnitude, R theta is the phase. And then we want, actually, <coughs> we want the joint density function of R theta. So in other words, R1, R1, R2, theta1, theta2, and we may want also the joint density function of R1 and R2, and the joint density function of uh, theta1 and theta2. And uh, more interestingly, from here, we want to look at the correlation between R1 and R2, and this is a classic result and this is what I am going to derive.
So to find the, uh, this joint density function, once again, if you look at the autocorrelation function of Rxx and Ryy, that's sigma squared uh, uh, rho tau, and Rxy, the cross-correlation function is in terms of uh, gamma tau. So I'm going to quickly sketch the results. So I start with this vector. We have four random variables here, x1, y1, x2, y2. So we want the <coughs> uh, autocorrelation function of expected value of xx transpose. Notice that all these are, uh, so this corresponds to time instant t1. This corresponds to a later time t plus tau or t2. And everything is real random variables. And if you, so you can use these <coughs> functions to compute the, so autocorrelation function will turn out to be, I'll write it down here. So this will turn out to be the, remember this, uh, this, <coughs> this rho function is going to be rho at tau. Tau is uh, the difference between uh, t1 and t2. This is t1, uh, this is t2, t2 is t plus tau. So the determinant, if you do this quickly, the determinant will turn out to be sigma 8 multiplied by 1 minus rho, squ <coughs> rho squared minus r squared. And I'm going to write this as uh, sigma 8 multiplied by 1 minus standard notation k squared tau, where k squared tau is <coughs> rho squared tau plus uh, gamma squared tau. So notice that this has to be less than 1 because this is uh, greater than 0. If these random variables are <coughs> not completely dependent and the determinant is going to be positive and consequently that's less than 1. So we need R inverse. The inverse is going to be 1 over sigma squared, 1 minus k squared. When I say k squared, it's actually I mean k squared tau. Uh, then it's going to be 1, 0. You can do it. I, I did it. Again, this is actually a standard result. So nothing new here, except uh, the, all the details are uh, generally hard to find. So. Uh, so this will turn out to be R inverse. And now we are, once with the R inverse, we are ready to write down the joint density function of x1, y1, x2, y2, <coughs> which will turn out to be uh, 1 over 2 pi squared r to the power half. This is the standard expression, x squared r inverse x divided by 2. So this is the reason I wanted r inverse. So we take this r inverse, plug it in here. The determinant is here, we plug this in here. So I'm going to write down the result. So this is, will turn out to be All right, there is nothing to it except that you just have to do it. So you take this x vector, multiply it from the left, 
uh, multiply it from the right, simplify, you will get uh, this much term. So now I'm going to make a, a transformation to the R theta domain. So I'm going to define x1 to be R1 cos theta 1, x2 to be <coughs> Uh, x uh, y1 I guess uh, y1 to be then y1 will be r1 uh, sine theta 1 and similarly x2 is r2 cos uh, theta 2 y2 is r2 sine theta 2 as you know the Jacobian if you do this will turn out to be simply r1 r2 so I'm not going to r1 r2 so the joint density function of the same density function, but now expressed in terms of R1, R2, theta 1, theta 2, would be 1 over <coughs> this Jacobian multiplied by the density function. You start substituting uh, these values for R1 and X1. Okay. So if you do that, you can clearly see, uh, follow it. So you have an R1, R2 because of the Jacobian. Then you have a 2 pi squared, sigma 4, 1 minus k squared. Notice that this is r1 squared plus r2 squared, so e to the power minus 1 over. So the numerator is going to be r1 squared plus r2 squared minus 2 r1 r2. Uh, rho cos theta 1 minus theta 2 by substituting here plus r sine theta 1 minus theta 2. This you can find the whole thing divided by 2 sigma squared multiplied by 1 minus k squared. Of course, k squared is a function of tau. So I'm going to copy this to that board, except I'm going to make one more simplification because I can multiply by, multiply and divide by square root of rho squared by uh, gamma r squared and uh, rewrite this as so we get uh, in this fashion r theta, r1 theta, r2, theta1, theta2 to be R1, R2, Alright, so uh, the, because I have divided there by square root of rho squared plus sigma squared, but that's k. Remember, k of tau is square root of uh, rho squared plus uh, gamma squared. And theta naught is, of course, a tan inverse of uh, r tau over k tau, uh, over uh, rho tau. So from here, the next job is to find the uh, joint density function of R1 and R2. That's easy because you can you just have to integrate out over theta 1 and theta 2. So we can pull out the terms. Remember, theta 1 and theta 2 is only involved on this term. So you can clearly see that this can be written as uh, r1, r2, 2 pi squared, sigma 4, 1 minus k squared, e to the power <coughs> r1 squared plus r2 squared over 2 sigma squared, 
1 minus k squared. So, we can write this as uh, I am going to take this 1 over 2 pi and write this here. So, 1 over 2 pi, 2 integrals, right. So, 0 to 2 pi d theta 2 and 1 over 2 pi integral from 0 to pi the remaining term. So, the remaining term is going to be from here. So, minus minus plus 2 2 cancel. So, e raised to r 1 r 2 k over sigma squared 1 minus k squared cosine theta 1 minus theta 2 minus phi naught d theta 1. But as you can see, this is going to be, this is simply a, the Bessel function of zeroth order evaluated at this point, this whole thing. So, this is going to be because uh, this is of when theta 1 is the variable, theta 2 and phi naught are constant. So, we can simply redo this by changing this variable still over two, one complete cycle. So, this will be <coughs> I naught of R1, R2, K over sigma squared multiplied by 1 minus K squared. And uh, if I substitute the remaining term, so this is going to be simply R1, R2, sigma 4 multiplied by 1 minus K squared e to the power minus r1 squared plus r2 squared over 1 minus 2 sigma squared 1 minus k squared multiplied by i naught of r1 r2 k of tau over sigma squared 1 minus k squared is the density function for R1 of course positive, R2 positive. This is the joint density function for R1 and R2. As we know R1 and R2 are both separately they are Rayleigh. So, this is actually the correlated Rayleigh, two random variables, two correlated Rayleigh random variables. So, the question is how much is the correlation between R1 and R2? That is where we are going to go. So, this is the uh, correlated Rayleigh really two random variables R1 and R2 which are correlated <coughs> and actually uh, we know since R1 is square root of x squared plus y squared, x and y are identical zero mean equal variance and they are independent, R1, R2 are separately Rayleigh. Really. So, this is their, uh, so that means if you work out for R1 will turn out to be R1 over sigma squared e raised to minus R1 squared over 2 sigma squared and R2 same thing. So, on the other hand, I naught of A as I said before is uh, 1 over 2 pi integral 0 to 2 pi e raised to A cos theta d theta. This if you expand simply as a summation and do the integration on the cosine, this will, this is easy to show, this will turn out to be k equal to 0 through infinity a to the power 2n over 2 to the power 2n over n factorial on n. This is a actually n factorial squared. This is a standard expression. The way you do this is you expand this and so that notice that there will be terms of the form cos to the power theta to the power n and uh, that is a standard integral over n factorial. So, when you substitute that you will get this uh, term. 
and uh, notice that it's, uh, this is an even function of uh, even, only even powers are retained. So if I substitute this for here, so let me substitute this expression. <coughs> so this will now read R1, R2 over uh, the sigma 4, 1 minus k squared, e raised to minus R1 squared plus R2 squared over 2 sigma squared, 1 minus k squared. And I'm going to substitute for the I0 function. So this is <coughs> n equal to 0 through infinity, uh, a to the power 2n. So this is R1 to the power 2n, R2 to the power 2n k to the power 2n over sigma squared 1 minus k squared to the power 2n and 1 over n factorial squared, I guess. And we have a 2 to the power, so 2 to the power 2n in the denominator. So we can use this expression to find out uh, uh, so if you want to write it a little more reasonable, notice that we, uh, we can, let me rather than write it one more line, let me rewrite it in this manner. So that's going to be R1 squared over 2 sigma squared, 1 minus k squared, because we had 2 to the power 2 and all the terms we'll see are here, r2 squared, 2 sigma squared, 1 minus k squared, All right, so we had R1 to the power 2n, which is here, and uh, 2 to the power 2n, I have absorbed here, 2 to the power n here, 2 to the power n here, and pre all the other terms are there. Okay. <coughs> so, all right, so what we need now is uh, use this expression and find out, uh, this is what we want to find out. We want to find out expected value of R1, R2. Remember, R1 is R evaluated at T. R2 is uh, or the magnitude evaluated at T plus tau. So we are trying to find out the correlation between these two random variables. This is the joint density function. Uh, so if we can do this, this is simply R1, R2, FR, R1, R2, dr1, dr2, 0 to infinity, 0 to infinity. So we, for this density function, we substitute this here. So then this is going to read, so I'm going to pull out the summation outside. Summation n equal to 0 through infinity. And uh, uh, so this R1, R2 multiplied by R1, R2. So this reads, no, I'm going to write down the results of what I have here. R1 squared, R2 squared, sigma 4, 1 minus k squared. So e to the power this term, this term next. So that's R1 squared plus R2 squared over 2 sigma squared multiplied by 1 minus k squared. Then you have these terms. So <coughs> R1 squared to the power 2 sigma squared 1 minus k squared to the power n. R2 squared over 2 sigma squared 1 minus k squared to the power n, then k to the power 2n. Remember, k is a function of tau. 
over uh, n factorial square. So what is missing here is the integration. So integration is on r1 and r2, two integrals from 0 to infinity, dr1, dr2. So let me tell you the, sub, the limit, the substitution <coughs> to be done. So obviously, you just substitute, this is obvious, one variable u, another variable v. And here onwards, uh, and if you, so of course, uh, then you notice that uh, this will become u to the power n, this will become v to the power n. Uh, but du is going to be r1 dr1. So you have one r1 here. Uh, d r1 dr1 is there, but one r2 will be remaining there. So if you look at all this, the expected value of r1 r2 will turn out to be, so the next step will be n equal to 0 through infinity, double integral 0 through infinity, uh, 2 sigma squared, 1 minus k squared over sigma 4, 1 minus uh, k squared, u to the power half, v to the power half. This is coming from here because we only we pick up r1, r2 will remain here. 1 r1, dr1 will give you du. So still there will be, so this is e raised to u plus v. <coughs> That's this term. because u is r1 squared over 2 sigma squared multiplied by 1 plus k squared. So that's simply u plus v. And then you have un, vn, uh, du, dv. Then you have k squared tau over n factorial squared. And here, of course, you have uh, uh, sigma squared multiplied by 1 minus k squared, same thing here, sigma squared multiplied by 1 minus k squared because, look at here, uh, r1 dr1 is going to be 2, 2 cancels, sigma squared multiplied by 1 minus k squared uh, du, etc. So this if you simplify, I'll write down the next uh, simplified line, so this is 2 sigma squared 1 minus k squared the whole squared summation n equal to 0 through infinity k to the power 2n over n factorial squared. <coughs> now the integrals become separate u to the power n plus half e raised to minus u du. This is v to the power n plus half e raised to minus v dv. Uh, but each of those integrals are gamma functions. Uh, so this, of course, will be, we, you can just work it out. This will turn out to be n plus half, and then n minus half, etc., up to 3 by 2 multiplied by square, uh, gamma half, which is square root of pi over 2. And consequently, we are almost there. This quantity will now be two sigma squared, one minus k squared, the whole squared, multiplied by summation n equal to zero through infinity. This term repeats twice, this, this also the answer is the same. So this will be uh, 3 by 2, then 5 by 2, etc., up to n minus half multiplied by n plus half, this thing squared. Then you have the n factorial two times. Then you have k to the power 2n 
Then you have uh, pi by 4. Uh, but this whole thing, so pi by 4 multiplies as pi by 2 uh, sigma squared 1 minus k squared, the whole squared. And this is the definition of hypergeometric function evaluated at uh, 3 by 2, uh, comma 3 by 2, then 1, comma k squared tau. So that's one expression, but we can further simplify this. So what is hypergeometric function? If you, if you look at the hypergeometric function for alpha, beta, semicolon, gamma, semicolon, uh, uh, some constant k, it's a uh, k squared, it's precisely this is the expansion. You start with alpha, alpha plus one, etc., up to n terms. Then you do with beta, but alpha and beta are the same here, so you get the square. And in the denominator, you have 1, 1, 1 plus 2, 3, etc., up to n. That's n factorial. <coughs> and uh, uh, we had the n factor, and then, uh, then another n factorial because that's part of the hypergeometric function. So we took care of alpha, beta, and this 1. And uh, k squared to the power 2n is the definition, and this is a constant outside. So. So this is one expression. Okay, so we can complete this by, so once again, that's what we have, the correlation between R1 and R2, we had it in this form. And uh, uh, if we, we can make use of uh, just one standard relation in the hypergeometric function of alpha, beta, gamma, c is also, you have this relation, 1 minus c to the power gamma minus alpha minus beta, gamma minus beta, gamma minus alpha, gamma c. So if you use this, uh, if you apply this relation here, you can quickly see that it comes up to this. Now what is interesting, the final thing is to um, uh, relate this to a result due to Uhlenbeck from, I think, in the 50s or something. Uh, so this gets related to the elliptic functions, and that's where I want to stop by just stating that result. As you may know, that there are two kinds of elliptic functions. Uh, this is the elliptic function of the first kind. And uh, this is the elliptic function of the second kind, integral 0 to pi by 2 square root of 1 minus k squared tau sine squared tau theta. <coughs> now, the, uh, this result can be written in terms of this. The easiest way is expand everything as a series summation. And so I'm just going to state the results. It's too many terms to show here. So the interesting thing is you can show that the first, this is, can be written as uh, pi by 2 multiplied by 1 plus half the whole squared, k squared, and 1, 3, 2, 4, squared, k4, plus etc. That's the expansion there. Uh, here it's going to be so in general, if you want to write this, so I'll write this. We can write this as summation, uh, one plus summation, <coughs> n equal to one through infinity, the whole thing, pi by two outside, then one, three, five, et cetera, two n minus one, here two, four, six, et cetera, up to two n, the whole thing squared k to the power two n. That's the first hypergeometric function. So I'm going to call this 2. And if you bring in the e fun the second hypergeometric function, uh, I mean, so this is the first elliptic function. And the second elliptic function, elliptic function of the second kind is 1 minus k squared sine squared theta d theta. And this also has a similar expansion. Uh, easiest way is just to expand this as a binomial expansion. 
and then again substitute the values for integral sine to the power 2m theta d theta, you will get this expression. So this term is the same as here, except that here there is a denominator, it's the 2n minus 1. And then the whole thing uh, squared. So let me call this a 3. And one can also expand this 1 as a, some, a series summation. So if you, if you, we already have uh, So this, if you simply use the definition of the uh, hypergeometric uh, summation, for example, this will be 1 plus uh, the minus half, the first term, multiplied by minus half plus 1 plus etc. minus half plus n minus 1, the last term. Uh, the, this is twice from here, two times. Denominator is n factorial, n factorial, k to the power 2n. There is a summation here, 1 plus summation, n equal to 1 through infinity. If you rearrange, I'm going to leave the details here. This will turn out to be n equal to 1 through infinity, 1, 3, 5, etc., 2n minus 1. Same as there, 2, 4, 6, etc., 2n. The whole thing squared to the power k squared, uh, k to the k tau to the power n over 2n minus 1, the whole square. And here is the interesting thing. Now, if you, you, so you have three series in front of you. One is this series, number 1, and uh, 2 and 3. So if you manipulate this, which uh, it's easy to show the following uh, results. So this will... Uh, Uh, so this will come out to be E R1 R2 will come out to be sigma squared. Uh, so you can write this series in terms of these two series. So this will turn out to be, uh, so we have this whole thing multiplied by pi by 2 multiplied by sigma squared. Here, this is equal to and uh, notice that these things also have pi by 2 multiplied by sigma squared. So if you substitute all this, this will turn out to be sigma squared multiplied by 2 e k squared. This is the second elliptic integral minus 1 minus k squared multiplied by first elliptic integral. So I'm going to rewrite it here. So that's the interesting result, and I believe this uh, result is due to, this particular relation is due to Ullenbeck. So remember, R1 is R of uh, t, uh, this is R of t plus tau. Uh, so of course this is coming from a Whiteson stationary process. The whole thing is in terms of uh, tau. And if you want, an, uh, so this is the in terms of the first and the second elliptic integrals. Otherwise, you have the power series expansion there. Though finally, I just want to make one point that if you find the correlation between R, correlation coefficient between R1 and R2, that will be, of course, E R1 R2 minus <coughs> E R1 E R2 over square root of the 
variance of R1 and variance of R2. So, this will turn out to be <coughs> because the uh, variance is for Rayleigh, so you substitute that, so the expression will turn out to be expect exact expression is like this. So, this is again a series expansion, but the interesting thing to see is, remember if you recall earlier from the joint density function, if k squared tau was of course rho squared tau plus e gamma squared tau. So, this is k squared. So, if you had substituted the uh, and the joint density function, Uh, turned out to be what? Something like this. So. So notice that if uh, the, if uh, the two random variables are if uh, independent, in other words, if k is zero, uh, they, they, you can see from here f r r one and r two are independent. If because if k is zero, this splits up. This is one. So uh, <coughs> so if the two random variables are independent, of course you can. This is. So it goes both the ways, that's the whole point. If the two random variables are independent, then k is zero. Conversely, if the correlation is zero, you can see correlation is zero means k has to be zero, k tau is zero, and k tau equal to zero means uh, rho and uh, gamma are zeros. So if you go back, you can from clearly see that from here you will also get this to be fr1 multiplied by fr2. Uh, so the moral of the story is if the two random variables are independent, then k is zero. But conversely, uh, if, the, if they are uncorrelated, then k is zero and conversely, uh, and the two random variables are independent. So here is the joint density function when they are not independent. So in general, this is not true. This is the joint density function. And uh, k is the, uh, this physically this quantity which is uh, like a correlation function. And the correlation between R1 and R2 can be expressed in terms of k, but it's an infinite series. And uh, if you want the, uh, the correla uh, just the <coughs> correlation between R1 and R2, not the correlation bit coefficient, just expected value of R1, R2, that also can be expressed in terms of the elliptic integrals of both of the first kind and second kind. So here is a communication problem where it involves the elliptic functions and that's what I thought the derivation will be interesting. Thank you. So this is just to summarize uh, what we have seen so far for stationary Gaussian processes. I've sort of uh, summarized the results here. So you have a complex Gaussian process. Uh, the real and imaginary parts are independent at any instant uh, t and they are also uh, 
uh, Gaussian with the zero mean and equal variance, then this is the amplitude. Amplitude is really, and the phase is uh, <coughs> uniform. And uh, except now we look at another time instance, so you have uh, another amplitude. This is really, but what we are interested in is the joint distribution between RT and RT plus tau. So if I define R of T to be R1 and R of T plus tau to be R2, we want the joint distribution and also the correlation. Uh, we already, uh, in the previous, uh, uh, Previously, we have just shown that the joint density function is given by this expression. Uh, notice that quickly you have uh, uh, you you have uh, R one R two term, then in the exponential terms, and also this I naught the Bessel function term. I naught of x, by the way, is uh, integral one over over one cycle, one over two pi zero to two pi, or uh, the cosine will. Uh, it's just a Equally, uh, or it being symmetric, it's also you can do it over half cycle, 0 to pi e raised to x cos theta d theta. <coughs> if you make a slight change of variable, you can write it in terms of sine theta over an even region. And then you expand it as uh, e raised to expand it as uh, e raised to uh, k over k factorial. Uh, but then notice that all the odd order terms will vanish because uh, sine 2 to the power odd order terms are over minus pi by 2 to plus by 2 0. So only the even terms are maintained. That is 2 times 0 to pi by 2. But uh, the, uh, this is <coughs> si uh, the integral of 0 to pi by 2 sine 2 and theta is well known. That's this expression. So if you substitute, it's a classic expression for I naught. I substitute that I naught here. If you want, you can also write down the joint density function in this manner. Now, oh, this is the expression we are going to use to find out the correlation between R1 and R2. So we substitute this density function here. Uh, we simplify this. So I expand the I0 term using the summation and uh, so I separate it out as in terms of R1 squared and R2 squared. I call this whole quantity to be u, this to be v. So u is going to be, so we get for r1 squared uh, is going to be u multiplied by 2 sigma squared 1 minus k squared. If you make the substitution, you will get uh, two separable integrals. And uh, this, of course, you can keep integrating by parts. You come up with this expression. So the interesting, uh, so interesting thing to notice. This is again a uh, this uh, this is. So this is the correlation between R1 and R2. So interesting part to notice is that uh, there is a square here. We had this expression before. I just want to go over one uh, some, uh, uh, one simplification, at least in uh, show all the key steps. So notice that these two terms are identical. So the terms are identical. So you can write this squared, in fact. Now, the, in the interesting thing is this can be, this last term can be written in terms of hypergeometric series. So hypergeometric series of alpha, beta, colon gamma colon c is alpha beta goes in the numerator. Alpha gets updated for n terms, alpha, alpha plus 1, etc. Same thing with beta, same thing for gamma in the denominator, cn over n factorial. Now, this is a classic, uh, so this is the only relation I want to use. Uh, so this is a classic relation for hypergeometric that uh, uh, this also can be written in terms of this. So in terms of hypergeometric, uh, this E R1 R2 so notice that k is a function of tau of course k is a function of tau so this could be written as this you see it as 3 by 2 plus 1 etc up to uh, uh, n terms so this will be n minus 1 here n minus 1 and n minus 1. So 
notice that this is uh, starting from 3. So if you want, we can write this as f of uh, 3 by 2, comma 3 by 2. And uh, in the, here you have uh, 1, 2, 3, etc. up to n. So that's going to be n. So this is going to be 1. And then k squared. k is a function of tau. That's uh, this expression. You also have before that uh, here, you have 2 sigma squared. Uh, 1 minus uh, 1 minus k squared the whole squared f term. So we had 2 sigma squared 1 minus k squared the whole squared f of uh, 3 by 2 comma 3 by 2. Now if you use this substitution this will this can be written as f of notice that gamma is here 1. 1 minus 3 by 2, so this is minus half, minus half, 1 k squared. And this, of, if I write it as a series, So this 1 minus k squared goes away because this is 1 minus k squared, 1 minus 3 by 2, minus 3 by 2. So 1 minus 3 minus 2 cancels with this. So you end up just having 2 sigma squared here. Now if I substitute for the hypergeometric term here, multiplied by, let's uh, get, notice that there is a uh, pi by 4 here. So when you multiply by the pi by 4, this in fact becomes uh, pi by 2. So with this, if I substitute for the f term, this becomes pi by 2 sigma squared summation n equal to 0 through infinity minus half minus half plus 1 etc minus half plus n minus 1 this uh, twice because of this divided by n factorial n factorial k to the power 2n now notice that minus half plus half is half so all the terms from here onwards is plus, except the minus half term. So I could write this as uh, pi by 2 sigma squared summation n equal to 0 through infinity minus half first term, then half, uh, then 3 by 2 etc. Last term is 2n minus 3 over 2. This whole thing twice, so squared over n factorial, n factorial k to the power 2n. Uh, so uh, if you want, we can, the same thing, we could also write this as Notice that you have here 1, 3, for the next term will be 5 by 2, etc. So, so you have 1, 3, 5, etc. in the numerator up to 2n minus 3. And in the denominator, you have, uh, if, you, if you take this, uh, so you have here 2, then you take 2 into 2, you have uh, 2 multiplied by 2. n factorial is, of course, 1, 2, 3, etc. So 2, 2 into 2, into two then 2 into 3, so this is uh, 2 multiplied by 3, 
etc. up to 2 multiplied by n. Uh, that also comes uh, twice, so we can write it like this. And I'm going to add one term extra here, so this twice. So this is now going to read this way. There is a summation n equal to 0 through infinity of pi sigma squared over 2. Now this if you, if you want, you can expand this as pi sigma squared over 2. And if you, if you just uh, put n equal to 0, you get 1. Then the next term will be half squared k squared over uh, k squared over 1. The next term will be 1 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 4 squared k4 over 3 squared, etc. In, in, in other words, the general term is of this form. Now I'm going to write, the interesting thing is I'm going to write this series in terms of the ellip, two elliptic integrals. And that's where we will, I showed the results earlier, but a bit more details. So if you, the two elliptic integrals are the elliptic integral of the first kind is integral 0 to pi by 2, 1 over square root of 1 minus k squared sine squared theta d theta. And uh, this is uh, This one, in fact, comes up in the pendulum, the swing of the pendulum. So the question is, how do you simplify this? Expand this as a binomial series and simply integrate it term by term. Um, so I'm just going to sketch a couple of uh, steps here. So this can be written as index summation n equal to 0 through infinity integral from 0 to pi by 2. If you expand it minus half, minus uh, half minus 1, etc. up to minus half minus n plus 1 over n factorial minus k squared sine squared theta to the power n. And there is an integral d theta. So if you so remember that my integral 0 to pi by 2 sine squared uh, n theta d theta uh, it gets uh, solved only for when n is even. And then if you substitute those results, this can be written as uh, summation n equal to 0 through infinity 1, 3, 5 up to 2n minus 1 over 2n over n factorial, that's from here. Uh, because you pull out, you have minus one to the power n, minus one to the power n, so the minus cancels off. And then you have k to the power two n. And then integral zero to pi by two sine two n by theta is one, three, five, Again, 2n minus 1 over uh, 2n n factorial multiplied by pi by 2. So if you put that up together, This is now going to read pi by 2 multiplied by summation n equal to 0 through infinity. One, three, five, etc. 2n minus 1 over 
a 2, 4, 6, etc. up to 2n, the whole squared. k to the power 2n. So this is for the elliptic integral of the first kind. And similarly, if you look at the elliptic integral of the second kind, so that's going to be integral 0 to pi by 2 square root of 1 minus k square uh, sine squared theta d theta. Go through the exactly the same expansion. For example, this will be n equal to 0 through infinity minus half minus half plus 1, etc. minus half plus n minus 1 over n factorial, then you have minus uh, k squared uh, sine squared theta to the power n d theta, integral 0 to pi by 2. So this, uh, if I pull this out, n equal to 0 to pi by 2, you have, uh, I need to write 1 minus half, then, so this is minus half, this is going to be 3 by, uh, this is going to be half, right? minus half plus 1 is half. The next step is going to be 3 by 2, etc. Uh, 2n, you can see from here, 2n, uh, 2n minus 2, 2n minus 3, there. And uh, from the sign, you get And here you have 2, 4, 6, etc. up to 2n. And you also have, you have to take care of the other terms, half, uh, half plus w uh, 1. In other words, when you do the sine, sine to the power 2n theta, you get 1, 3, 5, etc. 2n minus 1 over 2, 4, 6, etc. up to 2n, then pi by 2, and there is also a k to the power 2n. So the bottom line is if you substitute, if you put this together, this now reads a pi by 2 multiplied by 1, 1 minus n equal to 1 through infinity, 1, 3, 5, etc., 2n minus 1, uh, 2, 4, 6, up to 2n, uh, the whole thing squared, k to the power 2n over 2n minus 1. So the important thing is to notice this minus sign. That's because, as I explained here, there's only one place the minus is going to come. So the minus sign will be there. And uh, uh, so what, what we have to look at this is now uh, simply look at 2 e k squared minus 1 minus k squared. This is the Ullenbeck result. Uh, so, we can substitute this summation here. We can substitute the a k series into here. And if you simplify, you are going to get uh, that step. So, that's the final thing I want to show. So, notice that for the elliptic integral of the second kind, 
I'm, this, exp, this whole expression is going to come here. And elliptic integral of the first kind, we are going to take this expression and plug it in here. Then I'm going to show that what we get is uh, this term, which would be the correlation between the two random variables. So let me uh, so two e k so start from here. Uh, two e k squared minus one minus k squared k k squared is pi by two. So this now simplifies as pi by 2. Uh, 2 minus 1 is uh, 1. So right now it's only a matter of putting the terms together then this is going to be minus 2 over 2n minus 1 plus 1, 2n over 2n minus 1, the whole squared. But this is going to simplify as minus of 2n plus 1 over 2n minus 1 uh, plus uh, 2n squared over 2n minus 1 squared. And uh, this thing is, uh, you can see here, so minus 4 uh, n squared minus 1 in the numerator plus 4 n squared over 2 n minus 1 the whole squared. So that which turns out to be 1 over 2 n minus 1 the whole squared. So in other words, this now reads pi by 2 multiplied by 1 plus summation n equal to 1 through infinity, 1, 3, 5, up to 2 and minus 1, uh, 2, 4, 6, up to 2 n, the whole squared, a k squared the tau over 2 and minus 1, the whole squared from here. And if you look at that, that's exactly this expression. Pi by 2 uh, sigma squared, 1, 3, 5, 2 and minus uh, 1, 3, 5, up to 2n minus 1, the whole squared. There's a whole squared there. 2, 
Right, so if you want this also, we can write just pi by 2 sigma squared summation n equal to 0 through infinity 1, 3, 5 up to 2 and minus 1, 2, 4, 6 up to 2 and the whole squared over k squared tau over 2 and minus 1 the whole squared. Same expression as this. That's expect exactly this expression, except I forgot to bring up this uh, square here. So consequently, we get this thing to be So this is going to be, so you have a sigma squared there. So this is E R1 R2 over sigma squared. Or E R1 R2 is, uh, so we get this expression. This multiplied by a sigma squared is equal to E R1 R2. So here is the summary. If you start with the two, uh, if you take two time instants from a jointly Gaussian process, each of the amplitudes are Rayleigh, but their joint density function is given by this expression. And uh, their correlation coefficients can be expressed uh, either as a infinite power series or in terms of the elliptic integrals of the first, first and second kind. And this result is due to Ullenbeck and goes back to, I think, about 1948 or so. Ullenbeck is the, I think he worked in the Manhattan Project. And after that was over, I think he must have started working on this integral. 